What's going on, guys? How you guys doing? Me? I'm doing pretty good, you know? Still getting over a slight cold, but I should be, you know me, I should be okay. Um, but I wanted to come and talk to you guys today about a, a book that's, you know, really near and dear to my heart because when I started really getting getting into reading a lot, um, this was one of the first few books that I started reading. And that book is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And I wanted to, you know, just try something different today. Um, typically, you know, we read books, but how much of these books do we even remember after so many years have passed? So I read this book um, eight years ago, and I want to, you know, just talk about some of the things that have stayed in my mind from this book, um, because most of the fluff that you that you get in the book, you're not going to remember most of it. Most of the information, you know, you're going to forget. But there should always be one or two or three few things from that book that should stand out and that you should always remember from that particular book. And I just wanted to talk about the things that have continuously stood out from that book, you know, after eight long years. Um, I haven't read it since, haven't looked at it since. I typically take notes in my, in my books. I write on sticky notes and I place them on pages. Um, I haven't looked at those, so I'm just going off a of memory of what I actually remember. And um, I can say what actually still is in my mind from that book is how to actually listen um, and not to speak so fast. You know, allow people to to talk, allow them to take up the scene, allow them to have the moment. You know, people like when you give them the stage. Um, and to be able to listen and not having to always be correct. So even if you are correct, say you got into a back and forth with somebody and your side, what your, the, the information that you're trying to bring to the table is actually correct in comparison to what the opposition is saying. Even if you're right, sometimes it's okay to take a loss. It's okay to to allow other people to win because though you may be right, people don't like other individuals always needing to be right or always having to be right. Um, so it's okay to allow people to win battles. You don't have to always win the argument. You don't always have to always win the discussion. So it's okay to allow other people to win. And you do that by listening, allowing them to, you know, project their case to you and, you know, and, and agree on some of the things that they may be saying. Even if you don't fully agree, you feel like what you're saying is right or what you're saying could actually be right. Um, just agree, allow them to win. It, it, it allowed them to feel better and, you know, it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, strengthen that relationship between you two. So um, that's one thing I remember is to listen to other people, give them time to, you know, to talk and to state their case or to just have the floor. If you're talking about something as simple as um, how their weekend was, allow them to talk, allow them to own the conversation and to not always having to have the W in the end to allow other people to win in altercations or arguments or conversations, allow other people to win. You don't always have to be right. Um, so I guess those are two things. I would say those are two things that have stuck in my mind um, from that book. And the next point I would say, I have applied this to my life entirely. And it's also somewhat religious base, I guess you would say, is the idea of serving people. Um, I remember Dale talks a lot about doing things for others, um, just out of the own kindness of your heart, because the book is about, you know, how to win friends and influence people. And what better way to have somebody in your corner than to go out of your way for them? Um, people remember that. People remember those type of gestures and, and to not allow it to be artificial, allow it to be something that comes from you because you're just that type of individual. 
I will go out of my way for you. I will do something that maybe other people won't do for you. So when you're trying to gain people in your corner, if you're trying to make an impression on your boss or you're trying to make an impression on a woman or an impression on a male that you may be particularly liking, um, there's no better way of doing that than going out of your way for them. Doing something that tells them, I care about you, or I'm thinking about you, or I'm just doing this because, you know, you mean something to me. So that's another thing. And that's something that I have attributed to my entire life since reading that book is just being able to serve other people. Nobody pays me for the information that I try to provide through YouTube. Self-development, self-help, financial information, education. Nobody pays me to do that, but I want to help other individuals progress in their life. I want to help them get to a better place to where they're living a more happy, fulfilled um, kind of life. So my whole premise is built off of serving, serving others and um, trying to better them in some way or another. And lastly, but by no means is this, you know, least important, I would have to say is accountability. And I know that's a buzzword today. Everybody is, you know, going around saying accountability all 2023. <laughs> you know, a lot of people like to say things like that, buzzwords like that, but don't actually practice it. Um, <laughs> but I remember Dale speaking about accountability and owning up to situations where you're wrong and admitting that you're wrong and being apologetic about it immediately um, and showing sincerity when you are apologizing for something. Um, so I have also tried to, you know, move my entire life on that type of principle of being accountable of things that I have caused to, you know, to the destruction of situ situations or to arguments or to conflicts, um, owning up to the part that I played, the role that I played. Um, I always try to take that, you know, with my life now, even if it's at work, if things go wrong, something goes wrong at work, taking full accountability for it and, and coming up with solutions. So making the mistake is, is not the worst thing but you need to come up with solutions. How are we gonna fix this problem? So it's, it's all about coming up with solutions for issues because issues are always gonna arrive. Problems are always gonna arrive. So it's not about problems arising. It's about solving those issues, solving those problems, getting to the root cause and understanding what caused that problem. And, and when you understand what caused the issue or caused the problem, now you know what not to do next time. So it's all about not repeating the same behavior. It's growing. It's growing and learning from those mistakes and not repeating it. You know, we all know Einstein's <laughs> famous quote, you know, so it's, it's just about trying to fix things that are broken. And in supply chain, which is the profession that I've been in the last seven, eight years, it's when we come across problems in manufacturing, it's about getting to the root cause. And most of the time people will come up, well, this is the reason why this happened. And usually it's not the root cause. Sometimes the root cause can be very hard to find. It may take a little bit of patience. It may take a little bit more digging to figure out what problem is actually causing the issue. Um, and so it's all about finding that root cause and eliminating that root cause and then documenting that root cause and understanding when this happens, you're going to get this kind of an outcome. So I have applied that to my life. Um, and, and when I come across books where I can find things to apply to my life, I treasure those kind of books because that's what I read books for. I read books with intention. I'm trying to learn something. I'm trying to better myself in some specific area. So if it's nothing that I'm learning from this particular book, I'll probably lose interest and stop reading it. Or of course, if there's nothing that I really learned over the years, I'm not going to remember what that book was about. 
Now, it's been eight years since I've read a note on how to win friends and influence people, since I've read a single page, a single line from that book has been eight years. Yet, there's three important things from it that I still remember, and two of them I apply to my, to my life. That's how you know you came across a gem. And I'll always recommend that book to people um, because especially the, the serving part about it, if you want to, to influence people, if you want friends, if you want people to like you, if you want to get that job, if you want to get that higher position, you need to put yourself in a position where you're serving first before you're asking. So if I wanted to get into the film industry and say Will Smith gave me an opportunity to come work for him, I'll work for him whether he pays me or not. I'll be a, a, a non-paid intern just because I want to learn, I want to serve. And being able to serve him will reap you benefits down the road. Now he's he's saying you can use him as a recommendation because he saw how, how I bust my tail not getting paid and doing things for him. So now he's willing to write a recommendation for me. He's willing to, you know, go over and beyond to help me because I spent all this time serving him. Um, so it's not always about money sometimes. It's sometimes about building those relationships um, and, and spending time learning so that when you're ready to branch off and do your own thing, you have a great foundation that you have built for yourself. Um, but I thank you guys for coming and checking out this video and I'll be back with more content. Contact? <laughs> I'll be back with more content. <laughs> I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm out.